Hey everyone, Brian here. So I wanted to make a video about my review on the Tal'Dorei campaign setting. If you're not familiar with this, this is the campaign setting that was used on Critical Role Season 1. Now I'm going to go very in-depth in this regard, so bear with me and I hope you do enjoy this, but I'm going to go ahead and get started. So as you open, you actually are kind of encountered with this map, very high level view of the world. And to show you, there is an even bigger map that comes with the campaign setting. So as you can see, you have the whole entirety of where this campaign tech takes place, excuse me. I'm gonna fold it up to the side. But as you go, you have a beautiful introduction by Matt Mercer, and it hits you with chapter one, right? So chapter one over here talks a little bit about the history and calamity of Tal'Dorei. So it talks about the mythos of Exandria, the founding, talks about the age of Arcanum, the calamity, it, talk, it really just goes high level view on everything that you need to know. It gives you the history of Tal'Dorei specifically and continues from there. And then lastly, it goes into what the Tal'Dorei um, world is at the moment. So essentially since Vox Machina has ended their um, their adventuring days, so to speak. Now, again, as I mentioned, this was the same campaign setting that was used on Critical Role Season 1. So if you go back to see the first episode to the last episode of the season, it goes through a lot of this. Now, obviously, this campaign setting, you're not going to see the entirety because this was a game that was played by Matt Mercer and the Critical Role crew before Twitch became a thing and before Geek and Sundry and Alpha and all that cool stuff. So what I like already about this is that it gives the DM lore to, to work off of. And then from there, it talks about, <clears throat> excuse me, it talks about running a Tal'Dorei campaign. But again, what I love about it, it's not only giving the history, but it's giving the environment that the world is built around. So one thing I want to read, it's, um, it's under the Running a Tal'Dorei campaign, page 12. It says, Tal'Dorei is not just its history. Do not treat this book as an encyclopedia or as shackles that bind you to the characters and environments presented within. As you flip through the pages to come, consider why you want to run an RPG campaign set in Tal'Dorei and in the larger world of Exandria. What about Critical Role inspires you as a game master? Is it the bonds of family and love between its main characters? Or are you searching this book for the secrets of its plot and the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and the mechanisms of its vilest villains? Whatever the initial spark that led you here, hold tight to it as you read and search for the ways to feed your personal flame of imagination. So basically what it's setting is that I'm gonna give you the baseline so that you can use to jumpstart your world and create other things and create um, other imaginative areas of Exandria that maybe were not intended. But that's where Matt Mercer gives you that power by giving you the baseline that's found in the lore. So as you continue, it talks about the pantheon of Exandria. At a high level, talks about the prime deities, the, the good, the bad, and, and the neutral gods, so to speak and just talks about at a high level what their alignment is, what their domains are, and it gives a summary, and then it continues. It gives them the, their commandments. Again, very high level. And I enjoy that because your player, as a DM, might want to expand on one of the deities and might work with you on expanding that. And what, as what Matt Mercer is saying, you have that ability to do that with this. He is just giving you a baseline of what you want if you want to run a world in Tal'Dorei. From there, it gives you the races of Tal'Dorei, and it, this is all contained within chapter one. 
So this is almost like subchapters. Talks about the dwarves and the elves, talks about the halflings and the humans, the dragonborn and the gnomes, the goliaths, half elves and half orcs, um, and so on and so forth. What they mean by that, what Matt Mercer is talking as I as you read this, you're gonna see that it doesn't talk about the dwarves according to D&D lore. It talks about the dwarves according to Tal'Dori lore and how dwarves or elves or whatever races are viewed in that world. So if in your world you want to see the elves as an evil race who are actually, you know, trying to rid the world of anything that's not an elf and you see the orcs as a good race, uh, you know, whatever it may be, that's kind of the similarity. It's giving you the description and the characteristics of the races in Tal'Dorei. So if you like that, I definitely recommend it. If you don't like it, I would most likely just use the lore that you all want to use or not even go into this because I think, in my opinion, the, the lore and the characteristics of each race are in, intertwined and really embedded in this campaign setting. But from there, um, it goes into the factions and societies. So again, high level view of all the factions and societies, their goals, their interests, their relationships, things like that, their tenets, so on and so forth. So I think that's a really good thing to have because again, you as a DM might wanna keep this, but then your player might wanna expand on it. So it, again, it gives a really good ground setting for that. Now chapter two, talks about time and the calendar of Tal'Dorei. I think that's fantastic. Not a lot not a lot of worlds go into depth about the holidays and the time of year in which maybe this celebration is had and how that celebration is a cultural significance. As you know, we just got through Christmas and we have, you know, New Year's and all these different activities in front of us. However, we understand the significance of Christmas and we understand the significance in our culture for Thanksgiving in regards uh, here in the United States. So what I'm saying in this regard, it talks about, it touches the cultural references here in the calendar in chapter two. So from there, it talks about the different coastlines. It talks about the different um locations again a cultural significance because um exandria is not just Tal'Dorei. there's a bunch of different cities and towns and stuff and what i love about that is that they go into the population of the town and they break it down if you see here they break down oops right there they break down the town, the population, by percentages. So I really enjoy that. I really find that that's actually really good to have if you're trying to describe, okay, you have, let's say, 80% human, and then dragonborn's like less than one. So if you have a, a character that's a dragonborn, they might not react to your dragonborn character in the same way that they would react to a human character. So as it continues down, it goes, it goes, again, it goes into more details about different cities, different parts of the world, different governments, and it continues, and it continues. Let's see. Then it goes again into the different adventures within the cities. So it goes into the Cliff Keep Mountains, Fort Daxio, um, the different adventures that are there so the gat shadow adventures talking about that and talking about the again the different types of government crime within the city so it breaks it down in very uh, strategic and granular steps so from there we go into the other parts of the world where it goes into singorn again same concept where it's talking about the different landmarks it's talking about the different population the culture the government 
essentially everything and it shows the capital of Tal'Dorei, all that cool stuff. So now we go into chapter three, which are, which are the character options. This, in my opinion, is more of the, the meat and potato for the players. So it gives us a new domain for clerics, the blood domain. The different stats about that. So the blood puppet as your channel divinity at level two, your blood domain spells going into, um, let's see. Yeah, the Path of the Juggernaut, which is more for the Barbarian. Uh, gives us the Rune Child for Sorcerers and whatnot. Gives us uh, the Monastic Tradition of the Cobalt Soul. So it talk and it gives us a couple of different, um, it gives us a couple of different elements and factors that are new, specifically to Tal'Dorei. So it's not saying that you can only play, let's say a monk well, uh, of the Cobalt Soul. No, it's saying that you have now another option that if you want to play in this world, you can use the way of the Cobalt Soul. You can use any, you can use the Drunken Master, the Drunken, uh, I believe it's the Drunken Master. You can use that too if you want in this campaign setting, no problem, but they give you an extra one here. So I really like that. Um, they give you now different backgrounds. So for uh, the rogue, it almost the clasp member, which is kind of like the, if you haven't seen it, I don't want to spoil it for you, but it's uh, basically kind of like their the underground, like black market esque uh, group. It's assassins and 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 rogues of. It's essentially essentially going to be really good for a rogue to use. The clasp is going to be kind of that assassin underground uh, group. They have the lyceum student. They have the ashari. For the druid, uh, they have the recovered cultist. I mean, there's going to be a bunch of cool. They have the fate touched, so there's going to be a couple of different backgrounds pertaining to Taldori. They have new feats, so they have cruel, dual focused, flash recall, uh, recall gambler, rapid drinker, so on and so forth. So I think that's really cool. Again, it's it makes it unique to Taldori. But I don't see a problem with even using this in your own world, um, because it would it would lead essentially to, it can lead rather to Taldori. So it can lead that even if you're not playing in this campaign setting, but you do like some of the characteristics, as a DM you can actually inter intertwine this. Maybe you can maybe you say it in a homebrew campaign that. Um, your players are going to journey into the world of Taldori. And you run a Taldora campaign within your campaign. So almost like a mini campaign line. Um, and I think that's, that'd be very possible. Again, the sky's the limit. Because again, Matt Mercer um, created this world where he gives you the baseline of everything you want and everything you need. And then allows you to build on top of it. So they talk about the vestiges of divergence, which I'm, if you have not seen Critical Role... I will not spoil it for you, but it is it is really awesome that they give you the chance to look into the vestiges of divergence. Um, it's basically different different armor, different weapons, different things like that. Where if you collect these, these would be used then to fight you know the big bad main villain of your campaign. That's what I would definitely use this as. Um, and again, it continues on. It has optional campaign rules and guidelines. Again, this really may seal the deal for me because it taught, it gives you rules for uh, combat with larger parties. It gives you rules for multi-spell use, alternative resurrection rules, um, accelerated downtime. So that way you can kind of manipulate the time and the gameplay according to your world and to how your players play. My players, for example, I use downtime to describe things that are happening within the world, but I also use downtime as a chance and ability for my players to really talk about what they want to do, how they want to advance their character without um, stunting the game as a whole. Because when I say that, 
the stunting of the game as a whole can be, well, my player just wants to read this book. Okay, that's what we say as their downtime, they're reading XYZ book. Therefore, they're growing in their, their role playing and growing in their own, uh, into their character rather, and it doesn't waste a lot of time. So I, from, from reading this, this kind of talks about that. It talks about how um, you're able to limit the downtime. You can just say a statement and limit the downtime so that you can have the adrenaline of the chase. And I'm just quoting it right here. Certain adventures thrive on the adrenaline of the chase or the ever-present fear of ambush. So again, having that accelerated downtime allows you to keep that momentum going. Um, again, chapter four talks about your allies and adversaries, um, the beast folk, centaurs, gnolls, giant kin, uh, goblin kin, and talks about the, you know, the different allies, so like the Ashari, so on and so forth, um, gives, and actually, it gives different, different stats for each. Um, so, I really like that, and I really like the fact that it does it does show the different stats for your different allies so that if you, again, always being prepared, you can have a, you can have a, you can have an NPC ready for your, for use. And essentially that is it. So I would definitely recommend the Tal'Dora campaign guide. It is really just reading it it's a great way to start a Tal'Dorei campaign setting. And it's a great way to build your own campaign. It's structured in a way where it will allow you to build your own world within Exandria and build great memories with your players. So I would not hesitate on recommending this to anyone. I would definitely recommend purchasing it and working with it and really seeing what you can take from it and build a world within there. So that's um, that's my review on the Tal'Dorei campaign setting. I hope everyone has a great day. And as always, keep gaming.